Well, it's finally happened. The long-awaited Tesla AI day came and went last night. There is so much to talk about. I think I'm gonna do four or five videos on the subject, but you know where I have to start. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I hope you like the new introduction. Maybe I'll keep it, who knows? It's really cool. I love that robot uh, graphic and everything when they're doing the beginning. So yes, of course I had to start with Tesla bot or Optimus Subprime as the code word is. That was hysterical, by the way. One of the engineers said the name by accident and Elon was like, oh man, dude, that's our code name. So anyway, <laughs> they gave away their code names, giving away all the secrets, right? But anyway, he's called Optimus Subprime or to the rest of us, Tesla bot. Anyway, let me let Elon Musk introduce it from here. If you think about what we're doing right now with the cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are, like I said, semi-sentient robots on wheels. Um, and with uh, uh, the full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car, which we'll keep evolving, obviously, and uh, Dojo, uh, and all the uh, neural nets recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world, uh, it it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Um, and we're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Um, and it's intended to um, uh, be friendly, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is, um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. So it's, uh, it'll be a, you know, a light, a, a light, yeah, anyway, five miles an hour. You can, if you can get run past on that, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, around, around uh, five foot eight. Um, uh, has sort of a, a screen where the head is for useful information, um, but it's otherwise basically got the autopilot system in it, so it's uh, got cameras, got eight cameras, and. Um, yeah, uh, full self-driving computer, and making use of all of the same tools that we use in the car. So, um, I mean, things that I think that are really hard about uh, having a useful humanoid robot is can it navigate through the world without being expl explicitly trained? Uh, I mean, can, without explicit like line-by-line uh, -line instructions. Um, can you, can you talk to it and say, you know, please uh, pick up that bolt uh, and uh, attach it to the car with that wrench, and it should be able to do that. Um, it should be able to, you know, please, you know, please go to the store and get me the following groceries, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think we can do that. All right, so there are the specs of Tesla Bot. You can see that it's really, really cool. It's uh, also, you know, kind of virtual at this point. Yes, they did have sort of a plastic mannequin in the background, but it obviously didn't move or anything like that. It was clearly more of a form factor mannequin. And by the way, you have to give Tesla some credit. You remember when Elon said that he didn't care at all about the media and this was entirely for AI recruitment. And by the way, I applied to Tesla again last night because of this presentation. I was like, what the hell? I'll talk about that in another video because it's very specific to something else. But anyway, the entire thing looked like an eighth grade talent show, right? So you have all the guys with like the matching shirts and then the, the you know, the lead singer or something from the acapella group with the leather jacket. And they're all sitting in front of a curtain with a bunch of wrinkles in it. I mean, they didn't even bother to steam out the wrinkles. My wife, by the way, if she had watched that video, would have spent the entire time critiquing the fact that all of the curtains had wrinkles in them. And also consider that they were wearing black t-shirts with a black background and everything, so it didn't really stand out at all. Anyway, go Tesla for not giving a flying f about what anybody thinks about this stuff. All right, so anyway, back to the important stuff. So what Elon talks about here is that we've got a robot, but it's a very interesting robot. So we're gonna go through the specs 
specs of the robot, and then we're gonna talk about what Elon said, and then I'm gonna talk about what I really think this robot is designed for. Now, okay, it's definitely designed for what Elon Musk said, but I think that there is a hidden agenda here. How about that? There's an agenda that Elon and company did not talk about last night, but I think is more important than what he did talk about. And by the way, what he did talk about is world changing. So saying it's more important is a pretty big deal. So just wait, I'll get there. All right, so let's start with the specs. And yes, I'm gonna use my phone to cheat just so I make sure I don't get this wrong here. <laughs> We're putting this stuff together fast. I woke up early just to get this video out. And if you do enjoy this and you wanna see more of these, like I said, I'm gonna do four or five of these videos. So definitely subscribe to my channel if you haven't, but also hit the bell notification icon because otherwise, even if you're subscribed, it's a weird thing that YouTube does. Anyway, you can subscribe all you want, but you don't actually get feed forward or anything like that. So if you wanna see the rest of these videos in this series, you should definitely hit the bell notification icon, just FYI. Anyway, world built by humans for humans. Well, obviously that's the case, right? So he's telling us, or they're telling us, what the, what the environment that we're in is. So you'll notice that this has a lot to do with their system for full self-driving, right? They always talk about how the world's road network is designed by humans for visual neural networks. In other words, our eyeballs and our brains, that's how we drive around. So that's what they're trying to mimic in their cars, which by the way, I've said many, many times are robots. <laughs> I've definitely said that Tesla's vehicles are robots, and they definitely said that last night. They're very much of that opinion. So this new Tesla bot is just a robot in a different form. It's not like they've never built a robot before. That's all they build is millions upon millions of robots. Anyway, the second point on the left is that the robot is friendly. Now, I think that this is a big deal. I think what we've got is there's a, a probably in Tesla, and maybe for good reason, there's a little bit of concern that people are gonna be like, oh crap, this is the Terminator or something, right? He's gonna go, I'll be back. I'll be back. So making this robot that's kind of like a generally, a, you know, white color, very friendly looking, kind of soft looking, even though it's going to be made out of obviously hard plastics and stuff, they've rounded the corners to make it look, you know, generally soft. It's got, I don't know if it's going to have vocal interface. It was not clear. It said it was going to have a screen in its head to respond to things, but there's no reason. I mean, heck, you know, pretty much everything, even my little Alexa has voice feedback, so there's no reason why I can't do that. But they're not attempting to do that uncanny valley thing where they're attempting to, you know, replicate a human face. So clearly different, clearly something that you can recognize as a robot, but also friendly. And we're going to get to a little bit more of that in just a minute. But, you know, so there's, they're just basically saying, don't be scared of this thing. It's not going to be the dystopian future. And actually, Elon Musk joked about that as well. He's like, you know, I hope this doesn't appear in any dystopian sci-fi movies. But then we get to the third point, which is the most important point in terms of their vision for it. It eliminates dangerous, repetitive, boring tasks. So let's think about that for just a second. Dangerous, right? So something on a skyscraper way up in the air, dangerous around heavy equipment, uh, boring, you know, doing something like, um, gosh, I'm teaching a class in AI right now. It's, it's the weirdest thing. I'm teaching a class about fictionalized versions of robots and how that reflects upon humanity and ourselves and our thoughts about ourselves and our fears about everything. And the first class was yesterday, literally yesterday. And I came home and watched this presentation. And I was like, that is a weird confluence. Cause I said, these things don't exist yet <laughs> in class. And I said, so we're dealing with fiction. And then I came home and I was like, oh crap, within a year or two, these things are going to exist. So we're right getting to the cusp of where fiction and reality are meeting. And that's a pretty cool time to live. And it's gonna be a really cool time to teach this seminar. I actually sent this information to to the students in the seminar who are not like technical at all. They're, you know, theater and film studies students. So they're, they're not people who are gonna stay up at night watching Tesla's AI day, but they're going to be really interested in this because I think it brings up a whole bunch of moral and ethical concerns. A weird one of which, and this is something people might not have thought about, but that is that we generally treat our robots like slaves. Like, right, we have, and think about that in movies. I mean, Star Wars is a perfect example. You've got C-3PO and R2-D2 and the whole world of the droids in Star Wars and they are all basically slaves. They're property, they get traded around, they get abused, they have no rights. It's a weird thing. So anyway, that's a whole different thing. And I know this robot is just a robot like a car and you don't usually think that your car with full self-driving is a slave doing whatever you want, but it kind of is. I mean, it has agency, but you're not giving it any agency. I think it, there's going to be an issue because robots are human looking, right? If they make these human looking robots, people are gonna anthropomorphize that. In other words, what they're going to do is put human emotions and intent into these robots and people are gonna feel bad for these robots. I would not be surprised at all when, you know, let's say there's 100,000 of these things out there that people are not going to have uh, rallies or something like that for robot rights that it could be starting. 
So it'll be really interesting to see how this works. That's a dangerous plane over which we're about to go, right? We're gonna go from something that looks like a car and we're used to cars being objects and we just drive them and it doesn't matter. And the fact that it has a brain and all of that stuff is, is kind of under the hood. <laughs> but anyway, but when it's inside of a human looking robot, we're going to treat it more like a human being and we're going to be concerned about those robots. So doing things like dangerous and repetitive and boring tasks are going to be I think there's going to be people who are going to worry about that and they're going to assign more agency to these computers than they really have. So remember, this is specifically narrow focus AI. Well, actually, we haven't talked about that yet, but we're going to get there. But anyway, this is narrow focus AI, just like a car driving. So they don't really have agency, but people are going to assign agency to these computers and they're going to be protests. And I'm predicting that. Also, I want to point out that two weeks before AI day, I predicted that they were going to have robo dogs, that they were going to manufacture to help human beings out and to be able to do things that humans could do. I actually still think they might do this because I think robo dogs or robo horses or things like that are more scalable. So anyway, I got the human help robot thing, but I just got the form factor wrong. It's funny because in the video, I said human robots are too difficult to do well. And, you know, Tesla was like, difficult? That's what we do for breakfast. So anyway, they, you know, they obviously took on the challenge or taking on the challenge and they're saying we can build a humanoid robot, no big deal. Also, I've done other videos about how Tesla is going to lose their AI team if they don't give them something really cool to work on after full self-driving because, you know, once they get that solved, they've got the leading group of AI researchers and all a whole bunch more than I even knew about last night. I was like, oh man, there's so much more going on than I thought. But they're gonna lose these people if they don't give them some world-changing, awesome task to do. And holy crap, <laughs> building a humanoid robot that you can produce by the tens of millions is a world-changing kind of task to do. So go Tesla for making sure that they're not only gonna keep their AI team, but they're going to grow it in, in you know, probably by an order of magnitude after this presentation, because it was amazing. So again, we're gonna get to all of that stuff. I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted. I'm so excited about this robot. I can't even like hold it all in. But anyway, let's get back to the subject. So it's going to do things like screwing in nuts and bolts and things like that. It's going to do dangerous work like high, you know, up on high rises. I could see it doing things like picking vegetables or whatever out in the fields, right? All kinds of things that human beings are not super enthusiastic to do. Elon Musk did talk about basic income someday, which could be necessary, right? If we have if we have 100, 200 million of these things out there in the world doing the jobs that human beings don't wanna do, that's great because we don't have to do that labor and it frees us up to not do, you know, <laughs> horribly kind of degrading and ego crushing sort of work if we don't want to. If we do want to, then go for it. But it's going to kind of necessitate basic income. I've been reading through the Expanse book series, and of course on Earth they all do have basic income and hardly anybody works there. So it's an interesting little, you know, conflation again with, with fiction and reality coming up. This is a while in the future. But anyway, that is something that could happen. And, and do think about how world changing this could be if there are hundreds of millions of these things out there in 20 years or something like that. And remember, Tesla can do this, right? They are, are producing, they're now going to be producing close to 1 million vehicles this year. They're predicting by 2030, they're going to be able to produce 20 million vehicles per year. There's no reason they can't build you know, Gigafactory London or something like that. They can't build a bunch of these uh, factories just to build these humanoid robots too and produce five or 10 million a year. So in 10 years, they could have 100 million of these out in the world doing tasks. So that's going to fundamentally change the nature of labor and how we think about labor, especially things like manual or difficult or dangerous labor. All right, so anyway, that's the stated reason for Tesla bot. Let's talk about the specs just a little bit here. And you know, obviously they're a little bit loose because they, it's still in development. But first of all, we've got a height of five foot eight inches. I think that's 172 centimeters. I'll put it down below, something like that. A weight, it, this is all in imperial measurements, sorry folks. <laughs> a weight of 125 pounds, just for reference, I'm about 175. Five, so, you know, it's a fairly light thing. A speed of five miles an hour. Elon did talk about that, how you could run away from it if you needed to. Again, they're working on the friendly angle. They want, they don't want this thing to become the Terminator. It's got a carry capacity of 45 pounds, which is if you go to the gym or something like 18 kilos or something, if you go to the gym, those big plates that they have at the gym, I guess I just know this because I go to the gym all the time. So 45 pounds is like 
stuck in my head. It's not a ton, but it's a reasonable amount of weight. A deadlift of 150 pounds, which is basically leaning down and picking something up. Use your back, right, when you do that. Hopefully the robot will use its back. But anyway, you know, lean down, pick up uh, something like 150 pounds. It can pick that up and probably move it to the side or something along those lines. So it couldn't carry it long distance, but it could pick it up and move it or something. And then an arm extended lift of 10 pounds. So it'd be able to hold 10 pounds out like that. So those are all really important specs. And let's just table that for just one second because I think they have a lot to do with something that's a hidden agenda. So this all seems pretty reasonable. It's a relatively light robot. It's a medium size kind of in between statistical male and female sizes, right? Five foot eight, I'm five foot 10. I'm pretty average for a male human and females are somewhere in the biological females are somewhere around five, six, five, seven, something like that for their averages. So we've kind of got something in between. Like I said, I'm about 175 pounds. You know, statistical females might be in the 120 pound range. So it's on the lighter end of things, which is actually good because it doesn't weigh a lot. Uh, but, but it's in, you know, statistically kind of in between that again. And then of course you've got its ability to carry on tasks. So it's not gonna do anything super heavy. It's not superhuman, right? It's not gonna lift up giant steel beams and girders and put them into place, but it would be able to do things like welding. It would be able to guide cranes and put things into place. Imagine like, you know, Starbase and the Starship. And when they're doing dangerous work, like mating the Starships together or something, that would be really, really ideal use for these robots. Cause if something broke the robots, you know, they could be damaged or knocked off, but it's not gonna kill a human being. So that would be really, really excellent. And then Tesla showed us some basic elements of this. They've got some actuators and things. This is not a terribly useful graphic, but basically it says we've got some motors inside here that can, you know, turn these things. And, and Elon Musk did specifically talk about how they build batteries, they build actuators, they build cooling systems, they build energy systems. So they're really well suited to doing something like a robot. But then the cooler graphic is that inside the chest of this thing is a full self-driving computer. So basically you've got the hardware chip and they've got eight cameras just just like the cars do. So probably they will align these cameras more or less like the cars do, like, like uh, I think it's three in the front. So you've got like a, a, a far vision one and then a wide angle and a normal angle in the front and a rear view one and a couple on the sides. So they'll probably arrange it either in the head or possibly even in the body or something where they will put these cameras so that it more or less mimics the automobiles so that they can utilize the networks that they're using already for full self-driving and they can retrain those for for the, the robot's needs. So let's think about that for just a second. So what you've got is you've got a full self-driving computer, you've got a trained network that Tesla is very, very close, but we'll talk about this in other videos. They're very close to solving real world full self-driving. What do you have to do to get to robots? Well, first of all, you need balance, but companies like Boston Dynamics, et cetera, have figured out the whole balance thing and, or Honda or many other companies have figured out balance. So they're pretty good at that stuff now. And I would expect either Tesla will hire some of that that talent or they are able to replicate that in house. Uh, more importantly, however, is navigation. So these things would kind of out of the box be able to navigate city streets like sidewalks and roads and things like that. But obviously they will have to learn how to deal with indoor spaces, which are extremely complex, right? Staircases and little staircases and little teeny, you know, like, <laughs> so you've got this part of, of, of a building and then there's a little tiny step up of a few millimeters or a couple centimeters or something. And you could easily trip a robot at that point if it didn't know about that sort of thing. And then of course, if it wants to go grocery shopping for you, it's going to have to be able to understand the nature of grocery stores and what sort of products you're looking for. Like what is a banana versus, um, you know, a sausage <laughs> versus, I don't know, versus other elements entirely, right? So it's gonna have to learn all all of this stuff, which means it's gonna require a massive amount of data, which may mean that human beings may go around wearing like little headbands with eight cameras on them and collect real world data for, for Tesla, who knows. Uh, <laughs> they might be doing that just like their automobiles are doing so that they can collect this real world data. Uh, it's also gonna tie into simulations a lot and that is another topic for another video because that was also in AI day. But basically these robots are gonna learn all of these other things, but they're gonna start from a really, really solid foundation, which is a network that works to solve real world interactions. And so that's how the robots are gonna work. And then of course, manipulation and all of that kind of stuff, right? That it, it's able to reach its hand out and grab things and hold them with the right uh, grip strength and all of that. So these are all, you know, robotics problems that are ongoing with other companies. So I'm sure they will 
poach some of the talent from these other companies to be able to do all of those elements as well. So basically this robot is going to be able to do things. Now, one question I really wanted somebody to ask, and if I'd been there, I would have asked this question. I would have said, order of magnitude, how much does this robot cost? Because this is a really big deal. And of course, you know, there'll be version 1.0 of the robot that's gonna cost the most, and then we'll have rights law, and I've done a video about this too if you wanna watch it, but basically it will decline. Every doubling of the robot will cause it to reduce by some percentage, right? Maybe 20% or 10% or whatever. It'll reduce over time, so it'll become cheaper. But if this thing, I, I, you know, I was gonna ask, is it, <laughs> what do they always say? Is it bigger than a bread box? I was going to ask, is it gonna be more than a Tesla Model Y or less than a Tesla Model Y? So, you know, say $50,000. So I don't know. My prediction is probably these things will be close to $100,000 to start with per unit. Uh, and then they will reduce over time and maybe they'll have a light version for consumers and a heavy version for industry or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> so there'll be Tesla, you know, they'll have Tesla bot models, whatever. Uh, maybe they'll have sexy Tesla bots. Who knows? Maybe they'll have the Tesla bot Model S at the um, Tesla bot Model S Plaid. <laughs> By the way, this is available in the merch store if you want to grab one of these. But anyway, so you could have Tesla bot, you know, Model Plaid or something that does all of this amazing stuff, but then also Tesla bot Lite that's just for household tasks like, hey, vacuuming or uh, picking up stuff after your kids that never pick up their rooms. And man, people are going to get lazy if that happens. But anyway, so they could have something that's, you know, costs on the order of $10,000 for the household and then something that's on the order of $100,000 for heavier industry. So anyway, but I think it really matters because if this if it's too expensive at the beginning, nobody's going to buy it because it's just too much money. Uh, but if they can push that price down, it will really help to penetrate the market of just human labor. So we'll have to see how that goes. And I really wish somebody had asked that question last night. They may not have answered it, but it would have been really useful to know. Okay, so all of this is stuff that, you know, they talked about during AI day. What is my secret agenda here? Well, my secret agenda, and I'm gonna try to put a hint of this in the thumbnail, I haven't done it yet, but the secret agenda is that they're going to send these things to the moon and to Mars. Think about the size and shape and weight of these things. They're 5'8", which is kind of average human being size, right? They're 125 pounds. That's very, very light. It's lighter than most astronauts. They don't have to have spacesuits. We can put them, however, into any situation that you can put a human being, you can put these robots into. So they can sit in the couches just like human beings. They can be launched like human beings. We can even, you know, pressure test the vessels and everything like human beings. So they can be incredible test subjects. Forget about these test dummies that are just, you know, like dummies that weigh like humans. We can put these things into the starship and we can go to the moon and we can do the entire thing. They can get out. They can test out the elevator system. They can walk around for a while. They can come back. And so we can do incredible tests and that, talk about dangerous, right? So that's something that we can do with these Tesla bots before we actually have to send human beings into the same situation and we can make incredible tests. So dangerous, right? That's a major, major thing. And you could see that Elon was being kind of coy about all of the uses for this. Part of, partly because he probably is like, I don't really want to tell you what they are because I may not be able to imagine them. But I think in his brain, he's thinking SpaceX all the way, right? So they're using these things so that they can get economies of scale so they can build something really good for cheap and then you can put them onto Starship and you can go to the moon and then eventually you can go to Mars. But think about the other advantage, of course, is these are not human beings, but they're like human beings. So you can send these things and 125 pounds really, really matters. They're very, very light human beings human beings. You can send these things to Mars. You don't have to worry about radiation protection or anything. They can go there. They can explore the area on a starship. And, you know, the first sort of beta versions of these starships where they're likely going to crash into Mars and things aren't going to work well, or something fails on the way, whatever those situations are, these robots will be able to handle that. Or if they unfortunately, you know, die off in space or get you know, thrown out to Jupiter or something like that, that it's, it's okay. All of that is all right. So they're basically, you know, the Curiosity or Perseverance rover on steroids, but they're like human beings. And I talked about this in my Tesla dog, you know, video that I linked before. Anyway, they, they will be able to do exploration on the moon and Mars before human beings get there and they will be able to start building stuff on the moon and Mars. So we can send them there with materials 
and they can begin to build a colony. They can build, you know, underground habitats if necessary, which by the way, ties into the boring company, <laughs> right? But they could build like tunnels under the moon surface or under Mars's surface for radiation protection, or they could help to tend to the 3D printers to build the habitats that, that, you know, many companies are working on these like 3D printed habitats. There's just so much stuff that these things can do on the moon and on Mars that I think that's Elon Musk's true goal with this. You want to talk about changing the world? That is changing the world. The, the robots on Earth are going to change the world, but it's in a weird way, it's not fundamentally different because what they're going to do is take over what human beings have done. Now, definitely things will change, right? Human beings won't have to do these jobs anymore and it will change the whole nature of the economy and the way that we live, yes. But there's a more fundamental shift. If we want to become multi-planetary, we really, really need these robots. Human beings are just not going to be able to do this by themselves. They're going to need these things to be able to go out and handle stuff. They could also handle emergent situations, right? So you're on Mars, you're far away from Earth, and something goes wrong in your habitat. Rather than having to suit up and all of this stuff while you're in an emergency situation, you can have these Tesla bots go out and it maybe patch a leak or something that arises really, really fast because it can perhaps be outside in the near vacuum already, no big deal. They're just out there and they can go handle that stuff, right? So you go into like the safety area and they patch the thing and then you're, everything's safe. So this could cause emergent situations to be much better. There will be much better explorers because they can explore all the time. If you hook them up to some sort of power source, they can just go out and keep walking around and exploring and everything. They can help you build things. All of this stuff is critically important. So that I think is the real reason that they're building these. And I think they're building them at scale so that they can manufacture these things well and they can manufacture them relatively cheaply and they can make money off of it in the meantime. So just like Starlink is their way of getting to Mars and to build the Starship, these Tesla bots are going to be their way of funding exploration of Mars and so forth. So yeah, that's an awful lot of information and that's just one tiny little segment of Tesla's AI day. So definitely, you know, like this video if you enjoyed it and definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification icon for more. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. I enjoyed our discussion on Discord last night a little bit and also on Twitter and so forth. And if you don't know my Twitter handle, it's down here. So check that out as well. Anyway, really, really cool stuff. Thank you all so much. And if you want to join the club, check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc., etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you check the link and you go shopping, you help out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.